Hello, welcome to Round Trip with Kestrel, where this week we'll be visiting Cork Island with Molly Toomey. Molly, would you like to introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about what you do. Um, so my name is Molly Toomey. I'm a poet. Um, I live in Ireland. I've been writing since about uh, 2016. Um, I write poetry. Um, I write about different issues that go on um, in contemporary society. I write about uh, goddesses and mythology. Um, and then I predominantly spend a lot more time reading. Um, so that would be my, my main interest is literature, really anything to do with literature. I will uh, swallow it. So... <laughs> Um, I'm curious, you've covered a lot of topics in your work, but what got you interested in them in the first place? Mm, so what got me interested into poetry or the topics in my work? Uh, poetry as a whole um, okay. and, you know, mythology, um, yeah. issues that you like focus on specifically. like mm, on Yeah, so I suppose when I, when I first was introduced to poetry in 2016, or 2014, yeah, it was 2014 was when I went to college. Okay, okay it was 2016. Um, it was in NUI Galway, um, where I had Kevin Higgins was my teacher. He was the lecturer there at the time. And when I stumbled across it, I suppose I was quite unwell. Um, I would have had uh, anorexia. So I really kind of was looking for something for some kind of thing to distract me, um, to perhaps get, you know, to just to distract me, to, to provide hope and support um, and to speak, you know, to say things that I wasn't able to say and um, that I hadn't yet come to terms with myself. Um, so poetry was this kind of vehicle or medium for me to express myself and to have a voice, um, you know, where I, I was just really lost and numb and didn't really know what was going on around me. And then I just, you know, found this incredible, you know, real treasure trove of poetry in the library that, you know, offered me, you know, people who were expressing themselves completely and wholly and honestly. Um, and I was then able to do that myself through poetry. So it really was a, a kind of a source of, first coming to terms with things perhaps, and then a source of hope and a source of resilience. Like if I could read poetry about other people who had gone through difficult times, um, it meant that there was hope for me and that hopefully, you know, I could come through um, my own difficulties. Absolutely. Um, do you, poetry can be a very personal um, art form, more than most I find at least. Um, so do you feel that there are any poets that you resonated with like specifically because of their work? Mm, yeah, so when I actually was going to Galway and things, my mom slipped um, a book into my bag one weekend when I was home and the, the book was by Leanna Sullivan. It was called um, Waiting for My Clothes. Um, and, you know, that was, that was, that poetry book was about eating disorders and it was perhaps an unspoken way of my mother telling me, you know, I see you and I see what's going on. Um, it's difficult to talk about this. <laughs> so I'm just going to put this book in your bag. <laughs> Do you know? um, so that, that poet, poet really has, has really influenced my life because she ended up being my teacher in Cork. Um, oh, wow. So, yeah. And she, she, you know, she taught me during my undergrad in English literature and then in my MA in creative writing, she was, um, she was fine. One second. My <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Just had my ring light fall completely off the desk. Oh no. Uh, luckily, nothing too expensive has been destroyed. Good. <laughs> All right, that should hold. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, if you could go. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Um, I was saying that Leanne, then, um, she was the one who guided me through my dissertation and my master's. Um, I actually wrote my undergrad uh, thesis on her as well. So <laughs> you could argue that I got a little bit obsessed with her. But I suppose for me um, at that time going through recovery, you know, she was this amazing poet who was, you know, healthy and incredible and who was writing such incredible things. And she also encouraged me to kind of look away from myself in terms of, I was writing poems that were really personal, 
but she encouraged me to look externally, you know, to find inspiration in other things. And I think that was so important for me um, to get out of my head and get out of my own emotions and, and whatever was going on and, and to see the people around me, the earth around me, and to notice, you know, what issues we're facing. And, and that was just, and that was when the real healing started. You know, I know it was absolutely necessary for me to, to go through that phase of being so caught up in my own stuff, but to look outside of me to the world, which is what a lot of poets, you know, do in their work, to have that kind of empathetic and um, more compassionate eye, you know, was really important for me. And I think that Leanne's work really encouraged me to do that, you know, looking at her journey through poems, you know, encouraged me to keep going with my own journey, you know. And is that where you found the transition to like mythology as a theme and other sorts of things? Yeah, yeah, because her second her second collection is uh Kaloc, the, the Hag of Bera. So it's based on, you know, that mythical creature in West Cork, this old crone woman. So typically speaking, the Kaloc would have been represented in um in in literature as this kind of fearsome old, you know, hag. But Leanne O'Sullivan really rescued her in her poetry, you know, made her this complex woman with different, you know, emotions and different experiences. Um, and that's then what I aspired to do in my own work to, um, to take characters and, you know, rewrite them and rework them and to think about them as, as complex individuals, you know, to bring them into modernity and think about how they would handle situations. Incredible. Um, so as a poet, um, you've quite clearly come a long way. Um, I've seen you've attended the Voices of War Poetry and Music uh, to commemorate the Amethyst uh, at the National Gallery of Ireland. Could you tell me a little bit about that? Oh, yeah, that was a while back now. Um, I wrote a poem. Yeah, that was great. Um, I wrote a poem based on a character in a book about, um, you know, who was, who was a victim of war. Um, and then I got to, yeah, to go. That was so surreal to be um, in that location with all these great poets and musicians and to meet some big names like uh, Elaine Nicolinan and things. It was, yeah, that was incredible. Like any time that I've been, you know, lucky to to win something or attend an event it's always just been that like little boost because I think as a writer it can it can be so sometimes it can feel like you're going nowhere and you're mm. just you're just crouched in your room writing all the time <laughs> so you know those those things are so important to so many writers you know um and recently you were awarded the Evan Bland mentorship award uh congratulations first of all um thank you how do you feel this will affect your writing career going forward? I hope that it has a really good effect. Um, you know, up to this point, I have been predominantly uh, mentored by Irish writers, uh, writers who are really rooted in the Irish tradition. But to get mentorship from from an American poet, you know, who has, you know, really different life experiences, who can look at my work in a really fresh way and perhaps even see, you know, certain lines where she might be like, you know, this mightn't work for an audience that isn't Irish, you know, that doesn't have your experience, you know, and this is kind of narrow or whatever. I'm really hoping that she can kind of open up my work and kind of as well, you know, encourage me to think about what I can achieve with my poetry and just to kind of open up my mindset. I feel like perhaps sometimes I can be kind of narrow minded and I don't open things up enough. Like my poems are very tight and kind of rigid. So I'd like her to kind of encourage me to expand. I'm hoping that uh, that, that happens. Interesting. Uh, for anyone listening who doesn't know, that will be with Dorian uh, Lowe, uh, the American poet. Um, I'm very excited for you for that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and you also participated in the annual uh, International Poetry Exchange between Cork and Coventry. Yeah, yeah, so that was an incredible. Yeah, so so unfortunately, we didn't get to go um, physically to Coventry, but uh, we did get to meet everyone through Zoom, Zoom, and I did get to hear about um, Co Coventry's history and as well to like hear some of the amazing work that was being uh, written at that time by Coventry poets through the open mic, and you know, it was really um, it was really special. Um, to be honest and I went with my with my um other poet friend Jim Crickard um who whose work I really admire but um you know hopefully I will get to go to Coventry you know someday in the future 
hopefully. I'm sure we'd love to have you. Um, so with all of this in mind, it seems as though um, Ireland is very much ingrained, uh, not only in your identity, but in that of your work as well. Uh, do you feel that's the case? Do you feel there's a lot of inspiration pulled from your heritage? Yeah, I suppose that would be true. Um, I suppose certainly in terms of landscape, um the irish landscape is so kind of sometimes it can be kind of desolate and and other times it can be so bursting with bursting with life so yeah i mean and all of that would would affect you know my mood which in turn would affect my poetry and i suppose in terms of writing about issues that are being affected that are you know that irish people are struggling with um i would certainly look towards that um and try to capture you know the things that we're not able to say um, like even this morning, I was kind of working on a on a poet about you know the Irish lad, you know the the <laughs> guy who can't say anything, you know who can't express his feelings. Um, so certainly, I would be inspired by all the people around me, um, by all of the different contemporary issues that people are facing, and then you know by the natural landscape as well, of course. Very very lovely. Um, so, with that in mind. Do you feel that Cork has a separate identity to the rest of Ireland? <laughs> That's gas. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love Cork. So so because I came to Cork um, when I was really recovering, I always associate Cork with, you know, positive healing sensation. Like, and, and Cork people are incredible. Like, I love Cork people. Like, you know, when, when a Cork person speaks, it's almost like they're speaking in poetry. They're, you know, the accent, like I'm not born in Cork. So I come, I look at it with, you know, when I was, I was born in the hospital in Cork, but I grew up in Waterford. Um, <laughs> but I, you know, look at it with, with so much love. Like I love Cork and there's so many places in Cork for, for writers, you know. Um, you know, there's so many different facilities for writers to meet other writers and things like it's a really vibrant um, and really vibrant write literary city, really. So you mentioned before how you'd love to visit Coventry, but even in Ireland, have you had the chance to perform in different cities and different towns? And if so, how do you feel um, the reception of your work has differed from Cork to other places? Interesting. That is interesting. So yeah, I would have read in like Kerry, in Cork, in Dublin, Galway. Um, yeah, but that would be about the extent of it because I do think that literary events in Ireland are perhaps predominantly in Dublin and Cork. You know, they, they don't tend to happen in smaller areas. Um, but I, I suppose the Hmm. So your question is about how people react to my poetry. Um, I don't know. <laughs> it's that interesting. Like I think Old Vale is probably in Cork City is where I have read the most. Um, you know, but generally people are really encouraging. Um, you know, in Galway, I think the poems that I read there were quite shocking. So I think <laughs> I think I just left them speechless and then I ran away. Um, <laughs> So it's, yeah, it's interesting. Like I, I'm not sure that I've ever had someone come up to me and, and say something horrific. I have had, you know, like lots of people I have had drunk people say things to me, um, you know, which which mm. can can stop your writing altogether in certain, in certain instances, I you know. Um, yeah, but, but I think, you know, it, generally people in Ireland are very encouraging um, and are very supportive and kind um you know so but I, i'm not sure if that's um just because they're very polite or because they actually you know resonate with your work <laughs> <laughs> um so that it's, it's interesting yeah but i mean i once had uh an english teacher send me like a two a four page response to a poem i had published where he oh, wow. you know yeah he analyzed it as if it was a poem you know on the curriculum yeah it was, it was incredible like he took apart every line and he explained what literary device i was using the whole way through and i was like whoa like i did not know <laughs> i was doing this <laughs> you know so it, books soon. 
yeah yeah it's so interesting to know how other people you know poems really have a life of their own you know they do and they're I think once you've written it it's almost not yours anymore it's almost like it's gone out there now and you know other people when they hear it they're gonna take something from it you know so Mm, I feel like that's the case for so many pieces of art um but poetry I feel is special in that regards uh, especially when a poet puts so much of themselves into their work yeah this is true yeah um yeah. we are running short on time but I would like to ask you sort of like one more question in regards to the relationship between Cork and Coventry uh do you know much about um that relationship between the two cities um, I know that it's to do with you know the the peace the peace pact between you know and the the ma maintenance really of of peace between um between our countries and you know I think that I think that poetry is a really really brilliant way to um to express ourselves and, and to to communicate different you know emotions that we might be feeling and also to grieve perhaps for for the for the different historical events that happened and to grieve for the people um who unfortunately did not survive those events and i think it's a really beautiful way to commemorate um, the past certainly yeah incredible um what impact do you feel that your work has had on those who've listened to it that's interesting um I don't know really. Um, I suppose what I what I would hope is that it gives them a kind of vehicle to think about their own lives, um, their own experiences, um, and that you know. I suppose when I read a poem, what I want is is to really feel something, to really to be distracted, to not be thinking about something else that I have to do later or something that I'm stressed about but to absolutely get caught up in the poem. That is my ultimate goal, I suppose, is to absolutely, you know, just for a few seconds, get someone out of their head and to get them thinking about something that they didn't think that they would think about that day. Um, you know, to just change a mindset is, you know, it's a huge goal to be fair, but um, <laughs> that's that's my, my hope, but yeah. It's great to be ambitious. Um, <laughs> we are running out of time. Um, are there any sort of parting words of wisdom you would like to leave on? Words of wisdom, yes. <laughs> um, I don't know, really. I suppose, you know, I always say that if, if anyone wants to write, you know, the best thing to do to write is to read. Um, I think reading is is the best resource uh, for any writer in that, you know, sometimes I actually feel guilty that I'm reading and I'm not writing, but I, you know, I forget that reading is, is why I write you know if you can't see it done you're not going to be able to do it like you know so well that's what I believe I just think reading is the most important thing <laughs> Molly thank you so much for speaking with me today thank you so much Castro this has been Round Trip uh, thank you all for listening <laughs>